Hello, we are back doing the book club. Be Holy for I Am Holy book club. Um, they are the beautiful visions of Anne Catherine Emmerich, which she was beatified in 2004 by Pope John Paul II. And um, her visions were totally checked out and were um, okayed by the Catholic Church. And they're beautiful little tidbits in between what we already know from the Bible. So today we're starting with a new section, which is Jesus's public teaching. Well, what, what's great about this um, book is that it fills in the blanks for you because, you know, like we, we did, I think it was in 30, uh, day 34 that they did the birth of Jesus because we always see the nativity and it sounds like it was all la di da but actually um they had to find a place i mean even though we know this it kind of it kind of never may you know i never really thought that much about it after reading the nativity um in day 34 we learned so much many details about them finding the cave um, people still after them. It just brings the story. It brings the Bible to life. That's what I want to say. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway. Okay. So, Jesus on his way to Hebron. Jesus went through Nazareth in going from Capernaum to Hebron, passing through the indescribably beautiful country of Gesserah. And by the hot baths of Emmaus. These baths were on the declivity of a mountain, about an hour's distance further on from Magdalene in the direction of Tiberias. And the meadows <laughs> were covered with very high, thick grass, and on the declivity stood the houses and tents between rows of fig trees date palms, and orange trees. The road was crowded for a kind of national feast was going on. Men and women in separate groups were playing for wagers, the prizes consisting of fruit. There, Jesus saw Nathaniel, also called Chaste, standing among the men under a fig tree. Just at that moment when Nathaniel was struggling against a sexual temptation that had seized him and was glancing over at the women's game, Jesus passed and cast upon him a warning look. Without knowing Jesus, Nathaniel was deeply moved by his glance and thought, that man has a sharp eye. He felt that Jesus was more than an ordinary man. He became conscious of his guilt, entered into himself, overcame the temptation, and from that moment kept a stricter guard over his senses. I think I saw there also Naphtali, known as Bartholomew, and that a glance from Jesus touched him also. Jesus journeyed with two of his young friends to Hebron in Judea. They did not remain faithful to him. They separated from him. But after his resurrection, converted by his apparition on Mount Thebes in Galilee, they once again joined his followers. In Bethania, Jesus visited Lazarus, who looked much older than Jesus. He appeared to me to be fully eight years his senior. Lazarus had large possessions, landed property, gardens, and many servants. Martha had her own house and another sister named Mary who lived entirely alone, had also her separate dwelling. Magdalene lived in her castle at Magdalene. Nat Lazarus 
was already long acquainted with the Holy Family. He had, he had at an earlier period, aided Joseph and Mary with large alms and from first to last did much for the community. The purse that Judas carried and all the early expenses he supplied out of his own wealth from Bethania, Jesus went to a temple in Jerusalem. So Jeanette and I felt that we had read this before. I don't know if I had deleted it. There's not much to say except um, it seems here. So Jesus is beginning his public ministry. So that means that she doesn't really talk about the wedding at Cana unless she comes back to it. Well, the wedding at Cana is more his first miracle. Yeah, but it his comes. Ministry. But, but it comes. Um, at this time? It comes before the proclamation of the kingdom. So when it says that he's beginning his public teaching, it it doesn't say this is the proclamation of the kingdom. So I don't know. I'm a little confused how he's starting it when it started. It supposedly started from my understanding after the wedding at Cana. That was like the beginning. So I don't know. Maybe well, I think um, I think the way she jumps around her vision, sometimes she misses like things in between. I mean, we've noticed that before. Maybe or I of, could be mistaken. Yeah, Maybe. she kind of jumps around some sometimes. He may, and... have be he may have began his public teaching before they went to the wedding at Cana and then after did the proclamation of the kingdom. I don't I, know. I truly, I truly in my heart believe, that's my point of view though, that it started when he was um, in the temple and he told Mary, um, you well, know... Just... To I'm some doing my degree, father's business. To so. some degree, I would guess, but he wasn't really as a child of 12 ready to, you know, he didn't have followers at that point. So I don't think quite at that point, but I think maybe this is this is teaching me something because I always had the impression that it didn't start until after the wedding at Cana. So I I I didn't realize that. I thought it started at the proclamation of the kingdom is when he started teaching and had followers. But all of those guys came. Wait, it says those guys came to the wedding at Cana. So maybe we did. Maybe we did do the wedding at Cana. No, because she didn't. It's, she didn't talk about the miracle, but maybe she doesn't because her. See, this is a little confusing. She in the does timeline. jump around. She jumps around with her visions because yeah. she doesn't get the visions in order. Yeah, but this is in order. This is set in order, the way they set this book up. Oh, no. So anyway, let's just say this. What I found interesting about this reading was that Jesus saw Nathaniel and um, he... He knew he was struggling against a sexual te sensual temptation. So that makes me wonder if when he was at 12 years old, yeah, he, he could read that, read their minds. You know, God knows our minds. You yeah, know? because remember that, he, that, that the mothers in the town would say, what would Joseph's son, Jesus do? You know, right. Um, you know, she wouldn't, you know, she, he was, he was highly, um put intuitive in the, yeah so well I, you would people would think no. he, he was highly uh he had high standards obviously but um and so they saw that but in our society we would say oh wow he's highly intuitive but here he can read that he's having a sensual temptation now maybe he just saw the look of lust I don't know. I just, I just find it curious. So that, that's, that jumped out at me. And then uh, this, this, he says this temptation seized him. Well, if you notice when you've sinned in the past, it kind of latches onto you and 
whether it's overeating, whether it's um, sexual, whether it's, um, uh, you know, any kind of sin. Think about a sin that you've done in the past and it kind of does seize you. You yeah. kind of do feel you're in clutches. And I really think that that is a good, um, a good description of what happens when you're about to sin. It kind of latches on to you. So, um, Jeanette, are you there? Yeah. Oh, here. Okay. Um, and, uh, and then, um, so it was near the women's games. That's how he knows it's to do with that. So Jesus passed and cast to him a warning look because people say married people should not look at nobody really, not just married people, priests, a uh, single chaste man, because it leads to sin. Don't look lustfully because by then it's the same as cheating is what they say. And I remember finding that. I think that. that's what? why the women are so covered up. You know, their beauty, their right. everything. That's why They're just always countries. covered up because they don't want to flaunt it. They don't want any kind of what do we have temptation. today? What do we have today? Girls walking around half naked. So it's, you know, and, and I have to be honest, I'm a woman, but I love those, uh, you know, like you sent me pictures of your daughter and you're like, I don't know. It seems like it's a little, you know, uh, exposed. And so, yeah, it's true, but I've become so accustomed to it. I'm like, I love it. I think it looks great, you know, and we, even women, you know, and I'm not looking lustfully, obviously I'm a woman. So, but I just think I find it attractive because we've been so inundated with that, um, that those images that it's become, it's normalized is what I should say. You know, this is how evil steps into a culture. It normalizes what normally would have shocked. If, if, you, if they, they would have shown this in the fifties, the way these girls dress today, people would have been like, Oh, Oh, that woman's a bad woman, you know, but slowly <laughs> they normalized it. You well, you can't I mean? really judge a book by its cover, but, you know, well, I have to admit it does, you know, it does, it, it is tempting. I mean, I mean, you know, we're also thing. women. And if you see a really good looking guy, you know, and you see him with like a button down shirt or something and, you know, looking well, yeah, really but good. Covered. You, but when you see a you man bare look. chested and you see abs, like my daughter, or she loves or something, abs. You're like, whoa. <laughs> my, now my first husband he was built like a brick he had a flat stomach he had muscles I was just a kid and I had never you know I've done that I was like 14 when we met and actually I was 11 when I first saw him and he was like "Ooh," because he was all muscular and flat stomach and built and he could lift cement bags because he was a cement mason and so I was young and I was like "Ooh, they're shirtless men that are shirtless you know they didn't walk shirtless back then they wore tunics you know i so, don't know maybe they were when they were like like you know the slaves and stuff when they were like working well that's that. true that's true but women aren't supposed to women are w back then you you know women did it although there were seductive seductive women back then as we know but um you know in many stories you'll see like cleopatra and all them where yeah, they Pharaoh. were very seductive Pharaoh's women time. um yeah. yeah so but anyway i'm just saying that kind of jumps out at me um he became conscious of his guilt and that's a an illumination of conscience it's important to a lot of people are running around sinning and they have no concept that they're sinning. If you told them they were sinning, they'd be like, what? I don't consider that a sin. I don't consider that a sin, but we don't go on what we consider a sin. Yeah, we go people on what say, well, God. you know, everyone's doing it. Right. Well, you know, and we can't judge a book anybody. by its cover. 
we're not hurting anybody, you know, and yeah, it's, it's, you just got to be always, you got to be always thinking of what God's will is. Thinking, thinking of what you're doing and how you're acting and what you're saying. And before you According do that. to God's will, not yes. society's will. Yes. And that's really the point that I saw here. Um, And so what happened when he became conscious of his guilt entered into himself he reflected and realized and what did he do he overcame the temptation oh oh be careful you're you're leaning over i know i had a sneeze yeah but don't lean over remember i know <laughs> um he entered into himself and overcame the sin this is why it's very important to um Catch, catch that seizing that up here where it says it seized him this is why it's important to get that illumination of conscience and get it early before actions follow catch it and from that time kept a stricter guard over his senses and really, that's what it's about, our senses. We have to um, be conscious all the time, you know, and that's a very hard thing to do, especially our culture is so full of impulsivity and ADD. We have a lot of ADD and impulsivity. So um, we can't hear whatever's going on. So don't worry. Um but anyway, I think you're talking to the dog. But yeah, my baby's crying over here. Yeah, we can't hear him though. Okay, good. Um, but anyway, so Naphtali, known as Bartholomew, who we know is a follower of Jesus, Bartholomew, right? Um, I just thought that was uh it touched him too. And that brought me to my um, if you look on my Facebook, you'll see that um yesterday's uh homily um i'm trying to remember what the i don't remember what the gospel was it was matthew something but anyway um the priest said that um uh jesus god is generous whenever he does something uh, and he used, oh gosh, what did he use as a, examples? I can't even remember. He used examples and he said, um, and the examples were like, wow, that was very generous. Um, he gives us much more than we asked for. Oh, darn it. I wish I could remember it. Well, because, you, you always post your homily so you guys can yeah, see it on her. It's posted and I page. have yeah, and I have to tell you, um, uh, oh, I, oh, I already deleted it, or I should have uploaded it to the internet. Maybe I'll retape it off, um, and I'll upload it because the generosity of God is just unbelievable. Um, everything He gives us, He gives us ten times more, and we, oh, the loaves and the bread. He said, do you notice when he gave the loaves and the bread, he gave at the end, they had still 12 loaves of bread and fish. He said, so whenever God gives something, then he used another example uh, uh, from the Bible. I just can't remember what it was, but that's what he said. And I thought, oh, that's true. So what happens when, when, um, Nat, when Nat Nathaniel is, moved by his glance and saw that Jesus was more than an, uh, an ordinary man. And he was conscious of his guilt. Naphtali, which is Bartholomew and, the, and at, and that a glance from Jesus touched him also. What I have to comment here is that when I read things like this, you know, we read it a lot and we hear it a lot because we hear the stories over and over and over again. But it just shocks me. And I can't even imagine having Jesus in front of you, just looking at you, just glancing your way. 
No wonder Matthew left everything and ran to him. You know, could you just imagine Jesus saying, follow me? I mean, wow. You know, people right. say sometimes, well, I don't know if I would follow him. I don't. I'm like, how could you not? He had he a magnetism. Him. God himself is looking your way and calling you to come with him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> right. Well, let me just say, Jesus had a magnetism. Now, if you don't know that, you may have met someone in your life that was extraordinarily charming. Now, when you look at celebrities, they, the ones that like gather millions of people. Now, some of them like a Kim Kardashian is going to do, get millions of people because of their sin and they expose their bodies and, and their lives, which we all look at and, and are like, Ooh, um, but, but there are some people that have a have an automatic magnetism about yeah. them. It's yeah. a gift they're given. And my unfortunately, son, my son has that. My oldest son, he's he was always so popular and everybody just because he that's was like, how my I younger was, son was like, just like so contagious. You know? That's how my younger son was. And um, he would go into school and the um, the guidance counselor said, when Rick comes to school, the kids flood around him. Yeah. And what they didn't know was my Rick, he, and I hate to bring astrology, but I am into the personality. He was uh, a cancer and they don't like, they, they want it. He was, he liked to take it as, as a cancer. Young, no, but huh? My, my oldest son is a cancer too. Yeah. And what happens is they, they, um, they like attention, but then they're, they're people that go into a shell. That's why they're the crab and they don't like it. My son, everybody always wants to know him more, um, than he wants to give them. And my mom was like that too. And that's a personality thing. But when we're given a gift, like celebrities have a magnetism even 10 times more than we're seeing in our sons. And um, because they have a gift and unfortunately they use their gift, many of them, I'm not saying all of them because some celebrities use their gift for good too, but they use it for their riches and, you know, we, when we're given a gift, we should be using it to evangelize. And some of them do. If you yeah. notice recently. If you, live, if you live in the spirit more than in the world, if your priorities are more to please God and to do his will than to make money and to have a right. good life by whatever. But I'm not saying you can't have you can't serve man and mammoth, they say, or um, yeah. uh, God and mammoth, but, but, um, like that football guy, um, recently, two of them, the one was caught wearing a scapula. Um, another, I had the story on my, my, uh, Facebook and another was caught just talking about Jesus. Oh, and then one was said, well, they asked him about the royal family and he said, well, the only king that I know is uh, uh, the only royal family I know is Jesus, Mary and Joseph, Joseph. And that's, that's what powerful. he said during a press conference I that went that. Wor worldwide. And and that is how a person with the gift of that magnetism should use it. Now, I have to say my younger son he does the Knights of Columbus and stuff like that. And he does. He is always, when he says something, he doesn't talk much, but he says, God, like my, my, my daughter's boyfriend was taken aback because he said something. We do a family rosary. We're supposed to do it next week, next weekend or next Sunday. And, um, he said, well, he said, do you notice that distraction took place when we were doing this part of the rosary? And, you know, because my kids have been raised with me noticing unusual things like that. And he said that, and my girl, my 
daughter's boyfriend was like, he, he said later to my daughter, that surprised me. I didn't know Rick. So it's like my son knows just when to say something. But but when but what's funny is he told my daughter, he said, he said, your brother is so cool. I hope when I'm uh 30, 30 seven almost 40 years old he's like he's older now but that was then he said i hope i'm as cool as him so my son knows how to still look cool in the world but but he uses it and he will evangelize so hopefully your son's doing that kind of stuff too because i, I know, know he was that. i know he was raised by you but um, junior junior junior's very um, oh yeah junior. he's very open with his faith i mean yes. Yes. He'll be praying, you know, at any public place before he eats and he, you know, and he's not shy about it. And if there, anybody needs prayer, he'll, he'll put his hands on him and pray. I mean, he'll yes, just do you that. taught him that. And so, I mean, that really, we need more Catholics doing that. You learned yeah. a lot of that from Protestantism, but we, yes. need, more, we need more Catholics doing yes. that. We, yes. that's, I was that's, very shy about doing it. I was so shy about doing that. And then when I started going to all these other churches, I noticed that that's, they really did it. And it, it doesn't have to be. And in the Bible, it says, you don't need to have the perfect words. Don't look for the perfect words. You're not doing this to show everybody how worldly you are with the big words. You're doing this to talk to me. Give me the simplest words. Give me your heart. That's what God wants. He wants his heart. So even if you just says, oh, gee, uh, even if you just say, oh, Jesus, please be with so-and-so. She's going through a tough time right now. Just fill her up. Just fill her up with your love. That's it. In Jesus' name, I yeah. pray. I and mean, how crazy is that? And with Jesus' name, I pray as you ended it. Um, But here's the thing. It's not that it's in Catholicism. It's just that Catholicism is so rich and so full. We we sometimes don't teach it well, just like my son has been trying to, and thank God I got, I got a deacon yesterday. That's going to come to the grave site. Um, my son's wife's grandmother died and she was, she had her funeral in South Florida, but her plot is next to her husband up here in Orlando because they had moved to South Florida later. Uh, she was a professor at a college down there. So we couldn't find anyone a priest that had time to do it at now it's 1230 in the heat of the day, as Natalie said, because I called Natalie and asked her for help and she helped me know what we needed. And so um, our, the, that was our rosary teacher, Natalie. Um, so uh, we um, we finally got someone, but, um, you know, in in Catholicism, my son was very aggravated. He said, these priests don't, you know, they should be, you know, available. But I said, but there's so many they're serving. And um, are you okay? Yeah, I just got a, a shocking pain on the side of my cheek. Guys, uh, I just went through nasal surgery. Yeah. So it's been a week, a week, no, four days. Four That's five what days. made us miss, yeah. And so, yeah, so I'm healing. Thank you, Jesus. Everything. Yeah. Went so well, please continue to pray. But, yeah. Please um, continue to pray for Jeanette's healing. Sometimes you get these sharp pains here and there. It's because it's, yeah, it's still, still adjusting. She still has some packing in there. She still has yeah. some packing in there. They have to remove. But in any case, so what happens is um, Catholicism does does say to pray for people like that but we say it differently and it's not as practical this is where the um the what well, they call the reformation yeah. and we call uh we call it something different um but this is where protestantism is was a good thing in some ways because it has brought people that are teachers unfortunately those teachers left all i call our protestant brothers and sisters our lost teachers and we need to bring them back go ahead yeah, yeah um 
I always prayed when uh, when I barely started getting to know God again because I I was I strayed even though I was always going to mass. It was only from the altar to the door type of thing. I never brought it beyond that to my life like I should have. But I did train my my kids and I did all the all the necess you know the necessary things growing up in the Catholic faith. But at the same time, when I started really getting to know Jesus and really opening my Bible and getting to know the Bible and who he is and why he did what he did for us, um, I wanted to be like his followers. I wanted to be a prayer warrior. And that's when I took a special class It's called um, the Golden Goose or something, Goose, something Goose, something Goose of the Holy Spirit. And, oh, it was amazing. Oh, and in oh, that... In that special class, it's actually on YouTube. I'm going to have to look it up for you guys. It's an amazing class, and it teaches you so much about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But gift. there are great <laughs> Catholic studies that have that, that same thing. Yes. But she didn't know that. Wild goose. Wild goose something. Wild goose. Um, but she didn't know that. And that's why we don't want to direct people to Protestants. No, no. Books. This is a Catholic study. Oh, it's a Catholic study. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I did it. Yeah, it's a Catholic study. Um, and so it's called Wild Goose Something, guys, and it is amazing. I'll try to look it up and send it to you because it's free on YouTube. Oh, okay. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, it was amazing for me because I've always wanted to be bold enough to not feel shy to pray like Jesus did, to pray with my whole heart and soul with someone to ask God for help for that person. I've always wanted to learn how to pray. And what's I was funny, always shy. Always and what's, so shy what's funny that. is I always ask Jeanette, <clears throat> I, I'm not as comfortable doing that. And I'll ask Jeanette, Jeanette, can you say a prayer or the prayer in our, in, in our group meetings? Or I ask Alexandra or Natalie, because I'm not one to do that. So it's funny that you struggle with that. And yet that's what I always try to get you to do because you're so good at it now. Well, um, it's all the Holy Spirit because I'm not good at it. I just say, you know, I just speak out of my no, heart. But, I don't use big words. I don't worry about what I'm saying. You just call on the Holy Spirit to help you. But you said help. Protestantism helped you with that. Yes. Okay. There is a format that is something that helped me so much. The Our Father. The Our Father was given to us by Jesus himself to teach us. And the disciples had the same problem I did. The disciples went to him, Lord, teach us how to pray. How do you pray? Teach us to do what you do. Lord. But we hear oh, that yeah. so much. You we don't, don't always relate yes. it to ourselves you the like, same way. If you like break it apart, the format of the Our Father, you start with the hallowed, hallowed be thy name, whatever your favorite name is for God. There's so many. Well, there's that's one, what, that's what the father, priest, there's so that's, many. That's what the priest said a few uh, homilies ago, like a couple of days ago. He said, we're always petitioning first. He said, but do you know, but I don't think he said it about the, our father, yeah. but but petition comes the format you're talking about. We, we actually have it broken down in Catholicism. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it says worship first and this and that. Well, so if, sometimes just saying worship is at the bottom. Sometimes just saying worship isn't good enough for me because there's so many different ones. I need it more. I'm more of a simple head. So right. to me, it's okay. You have to, you have to um, not Thank just worship God. at the beginning. You need to, Thank show God. reverence, show reverence, reverence to God, and then because you are approaching His throne room at that right. moment that you're praying. So, what do you want to say? Hey, God! No, you want to say Heavenly Father, Abba, Father, something Almighty, King of the right. Universe. I love that one. Right. And right. so, you want to approach Him like that, and then you want to talk a little bit about Him. Let Him know what you're praying about specifically at that moment. This person here, blah, 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 his name or her name or myself or whatever I'm going through. You know my heart, Lord. You know what I'm going through, blah, blah, blah. Then when you're done asking, him, you start giving thanks. You start giving thanks for all the things that you already have in your life. 
Thank you so much for having my lungs that I can breathe today. Thank you so much for the roof over my hair. Thank you for everything. You take care of us in every way. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Then you want to end it with some kind of like, we love you, we're here, please help us, guide us, something to keep you back on track. And then you finish it by saying, in your son's holy name, in Jesus' name, because you're praying this through what Jesus did for us. Yeah. So yeah. in his name. So if you just remember those simple, they're like four steps, very simple right, right. steps in your prayer. They can be any word that you have in your heart. You just follow that. And even if it's just the word Jesus, you know, she needs you, whatever. It works. Right. So, right. I mean, right. and you've got to not be shy. You've got to learn and pray. See, I always pray for boldness because I'm a very shy person. I used to stutter like crazy when I was younger. Well, you were a child, too. Yeah. It's, I, she I was an only child. Problems. And I think, yeah, I think when you're, when you have more brothers and sisters, you learn to speak up. She didn't have to, because she was the focus of everybody. She was Yeah, the but it kid. changes you guys. When somebody lays their hands on you and asks God for help for you. Oh my yes. gosh. It changes you. You feel the heat in your body. You feel. Yes. Feel the power of the Holy Spirit. And we all got that power. Yes. So why are we so shy to use it? I right. don't care what the world thinks anymore. I only want to help that person with the only one that matters is the our father, right? The so, only one we should care about what thinks of is him. So oh, yes, yes. So anyway, but I'm sorry. Getting I back to our speaking. story. <laughs> getting back to our story. No, that's an important thing, though, what you just shared there. Because I just that, want to help people not to be shy yeah, and go out there and pray. That's the point. When we were talking about charisma, when people have charisma, that is a gift. And God requires that we use our gifts for his kingdom. So what you just did is that's become a gift. Often you'll find something that is actually a gift of yours, you're afraid of. And when you really work into it, you're actually good at it. So that's a gift that Jeanette has, and she's sharing that. So no, we're grateful that you just shared all that. Um, but in any case, so as we continue, when someone has charisma, they should use that gift to build God's kingdom because that's all life is about. And that's the point I'm trying to make to like my daughter's boyfriend, you know, it's not about, you know, he's very wealthy and, um, and he's like, I never ate a $7 steak. I'm like, I'm so happy when I find a $7 steak, you know, <laughs> I buy top sirloin and if I could get it at $7 or, you know, five is what I try to get. Go to um, Aldi's. They have the best. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I never go to Aldi's, but anyway, I end up. But they have I the best organic produce and so cheap, girl. I know. I'm terrible. I go to Publix and I just, I only want, I don't want to go a lot of places, but, um, Anyway, so, uh, yeah, it use your charisma to build God's kingdom. Everything should be pointing to God's kingdom. So here Jesus journeyed with his two young friends to Hebron in Judea. Um, they did not remain faithful to him. Jeanette, they did not remain faithful to him. I don't know why his two friends didn't remain faithful to him. They separated from him. But after they converted by his apparition, I at first thought that this wasn't the same two people they were talking about here, Nathaniel and um, and uh, Bartholomew. But now I realize they were absolutely, he, they, this is absolutely talking about him because it's said Saint Bartholomew from the apostles. Yes. And his name was Napoli. I've never Na heard that in the Bible. Nef Neftali. Nef nef Neftali. Nef Neftali. I've never heard, remember hearing that. Neftali. 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 Great right, sentence. So it's, it's pronounced Neftali. Okay. Really? Is he from he's from Middle East? He's from Puerto Rico. 
Oh, okay. And so Naftali. a lot of Christians are in Puerto Rico. So, yeah. um, okay. So uh -huh. Naftali, um, it was all, it was Bartholomew. And so these two men, it says here that they overcame the temptation and then they later were converted. So he, the first thing we do when we come to faith, that's one of the first steps. If you know a person that you want to help bring into the faith, the first thing you do is you help illuminate their conscience about sin. And it it's not easy. You know, we're working on that with a Protestant for my daughter's boyfriend. We're trying to help him and we're trying to help him awaken his conscience about sin because, you know, young guys today. So anyway, um, I thought it was interesting here. They separated from him, but after his resurrection, of course, after his resurrection, because Bartholomew, oh, there's the baby. There's the baby. Oh. <laughs> oh, now this so is, cute. um, this is your, this is your, Sadie, Sabina's, Sabina's, Sabina's uh, daughter. Sabina's okay, the nurse. And yeah, Sabina's the nurse and she works a lot of hours. So Jeanette gets that dog a lot. She's on vacation in Mexico now. And oh, I, get okay. to, I get to babysit my fur grandchild. <laughs> yeah. Um, my, my son just came back from vacation anyway. So um so uh yeah one of her daughters i wanted to say is a nurse and the other one is an artist they're they they're opposite each other Opposites. but yet they're alike it's yeah. weird it's like they're both a part of Jeanette. it's really weird yeah. they have anyway. different sides of me it's different yes. sides of me <laughs> yes it's so funny i'm like she's so lucky to have two girls I have just uh, one girl and um, she's like me, but in she's different just ways. like you. She's mini you. Well, no, she's, but, but her personality, she's, uh, she's really like, she would never get on and talk like this. Like, she's like, you can't hardly get a word, you know, she's, you know, with me, she, she's like my mom. My mom would talk uh, in person. She's a Pisces, okay? I'm sorry to use that, but I believe in personality. Like, they're like a Cancer, Water Sign, and Scorpio. They're all very quiet people, and they're to themselves. But um, she, uh, she, she won't. So anyway, so here we are, um, followers uh, that, that, become converted after because he illuminated their conscience which was the first step to uh getting someone away from sin is to illuminate their conscience and then what happens in the end they saw that he resurrected they were converted by his apparition so i mean on mount thebes in Gal in galilee right there so yes, they were a part of his followers and his group. Um, so when in Beth Bethania, Jesus visited Lazarus, and we know Lazarus from the Bible. He raised Lazarus, remember? Um, and Lazarus was a rich man, and we all know that. That surprises Martha me. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know that he was wealthy. Mm hmm. And Martha, you know, Martha and Mary were Lazarus's sisters. And so um, she, Martha had her own house and another sister named Mary. And you know, the whole Mary Martha thing. I love that story. You're, I see, I see, um, you know, my mom was a Mary. I was a Martha. And remember the story where Jesus, where Ma Ma uh, Martha comes to him and says, Jesus, can you tell Mary to help me? I'm doing all this serving. And he said, where was Mary at his feet in prayer? And he said, no, Mary is doing the right thing. He's not saying that Martha wasn't doing the right thing, but Martha could have used more prayer. And so I was a Martha. My mom you was a Mary. A both. You need a little of both. Yes, you need Moderation. a little of both Martha and Mary. And Jeanette's my my Mary. She helps me with like the way my mother helped me in a different way because she's totally different than my mother. But I'm just saying that 
you know, you're, you've, you've, because we met in a rosary class. Oh, what was I going to say about rosary? Oh, when you were saying the prayer, let me go back to this real quick. When you were saying the formula about prayer, the first thing I do when I say the rosary, when I'm on the, uh, the first Hail Mary, uh, uh, feed we're, we're supposed to do faith hope and charity the first thing i do is thank god for my faith if it weren't for my faith i would not know who i was i would still be depressed even though i was catholic my whole life i was i always had an overshadow of depression and when you have something like that you need God more than ever. But I didn't know that I needed God so much that it would help heal my depression. And a lot of the saints, and a lot of the saints yes. did too. If you read their stories of all these dark yeah. times that they've had, and they go back and they go back, they say, why can't I hear you? Mother yeah. Teresa, yeah. Padre Pio, all these, all these beautiful saints. So and in human. Our world, that's our human side. Yeah. And I live, I had a lot of trauma from the time I was a baby. I had a lot of trauma in my life. And so, um, and then I grew up to live a lot of trauma, but, uh, now I'm smart enough to know when to stay away from, but uh, it took me a lifetime. But in any case, um, you don't know you need God. So when I, when I do that first rosary faith, I thank God for my faith. So that was all I wanted to go back to. So yeah, Lazarus was a rich man, had large possessions, landed property gardens, and Martha and Mary were the, you know, that, that story. So I like to connect the stories. That's what this book is doing for me. So he had an early period aided Joseph and Mary with large alms this is why they were so dependent on jesus when they call him and say he died your friend died and jesus cried and he raised him after days of him already he waited died. he waited and they were like curious why aren't you going jesus didn't i just tell you get there with time you might be able no it's okay he, he yeah. needed to do that in order to show them the yes. miracle yes. that nothing is impossible, nothing, not even being dead to the point of rotting, is it impossible for God to turn it around for you? That just gives me chills. It does. It does. So, so look at the, look at the contrast. Now it goes from this good man, Lazarus, where he helped joseph and mary with large alms from the first to the last and did much for his community lazarus was a very um wealthy man he did so much for the community that's that's how wealthy then the contrast um the purse that judas the betrayer carried remember and he was the one that said don't waste anointing on jesus's and 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 they said oh no you do do that because you know that's jesus um he wanted to count pennies and he's the one that sold jesus out for those pennies uh 30 uh silver um but uh the purse that judas carried in all the early expenses he supplied out of his own wealth so Lazarus is the one that supplied them with all that money. So I just found that, you know, pretty yes. fascinating. I didn't so know that. <laughs> tomorrow, guys, you will learn so much more about the wow. family of okay. Lazarus. Cool. So not tomorrow. I think we're coming back Wednesday. Yeah. So guys, make sure you come back. It's a nice, uh, a nice uh, chunky reading. We got nine pages here. Um, and then we'll be done that chapter. And what's the next chapter, Jeanette? It's Jesus and Hebron. No. Sultanian oh, yeah. and Nazareth. Yeah. So no, he's, gonna... still, he's still moving around. Yeah. So, yeah, because it's the beginning of his. And yeah. I wonder if we're going to go into. Um, I wonder if we're going to go into the. um uh the wedding of Cana more but if we are unless we already had you know we we uh, maybe that was just a small mention because I do remember him saying that certain people came so I don't know 
So I'm curious about that. But they, anyway, they guys. Pretty much the next like week or so, pretty much is Jesus among the publicans. And all that. Yeah, this is uh, mainly all his start and his travels and all the places he went to. It's going Sorry. to be fun to hear how the we're probably going to hear about how more followers start coming. I think this is an exciting period. So make sure you come back, guys, because we are about to enter into Jesus's public ministry. And to me, that's exciting. You know, yeah. it's exciting to hear like how he was illuminating people's conscience. We're going to see him when, in miracles. We're going to see we will him be walking with him. Yes. We are part of this. Like, you know, when I read these, it's like, I'm there. I feel like I'm there. Yeah. You know? I feel like I know Lazarus a little bit. Yeah. And tomorrow we're going to learn about his family more. We're going to learn about those early things. I didn't know he helped Joseph and Mary and, yeah. and provided yeah. the wealth in the beginning. So then we're going to start to see right. there's other wealthy ones that come along. <laughs> And then women come along. So we're going to start to see and know where our roles lie in those people. So please come back and be ready. Okay. So come back. We got exciting stuff to, to explore together. Is this not the funnest thing, Janet? And if you guys missed any on the bottom there, you're going to look put below. your uh, YouTube uh, channel and she has yep. them all in order from the very yes. beginning. So look go back, below. listen to them. Yeah. They're just amazing so uh, good. revelations, oh. visions. I'm oh, loving this book and you guys are going to too. So make sure you come back. We'll see Bye, you guys. later.